origin, click once and drag out. Now before I click again, I'm gonna go ahead and add my measurements. Before we've gone ahead and just typed in eight comma six and that would give us our rectangle. But that's gonna give us a rectangle eight inches by six inches. We need this to be feet. So when I enter my eight, I now need to add the foot symbol after it, then the comma, and then my six and the foot symbol again. Once I hit enter, if everything is correct, you'll notice that my rectangle is much larger than that reference model we have in the middle of the screen. And that's exactly what we want. Now that we have that model correct, we can go ahead and click on our reference model and simply delete them. Now we're going to go back to a top view approach and we're going to go ahead and look at focusing on making the point of the ship. So in order to do this, we're going to grab a line tool and with our line tool, we want to find the midpoint on the right side of our rectangle. Once you find that midpoint, click once and drag out. Before clicking again, we need to add a measurement. And in this case, our measurement is going to be four and then the foot symbol for four feet. Now that you have your four foot line, we can go ahead and continue by drawing a line to both corners on that right hand side. That's going to go ahead and give you that point. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and grab our eraser tool and we're going to go ahead and delete all three of those lines. Here you have your basic shape of your ship. Now we need to give this a little bit of height. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at using our push pull and we're going to actually bring this up about one and a half feet. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab the push pull, click in the center of your shape and move your mouse up. Once we move that up before clicking, we're going to go ahead and enter one foot and then we're going to put the number six after it. This should give us a ship shape of one foot six inches. Now that we have that shape set, the last thing we need to do for this section is to move this up off of that red axis. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab my arrow tool and I'm going to need to triple click on my shape. Once your ship is highlighted, we're going to then go to a front view. We're going to need to use this blue axis line to help us move that shape up on the axis. Once it's highlighted and you're in a front view, go ahead and grab the move tool. Once you have the move tool, grab that bottom left endpoint and click one time. Once you click once, you're going to move that shape up. And before clicking, let's go ahead and enter three feet into our measurement box. Once we enter that three feet and hit enter, you have now completed your ship's shape. The next part of this is going to be looking at creating the hull of the ship, which will extend from the bottom of our shape and down to that red axis. So next up, we're going to take a look at creating the ship's hull. Now that we've created our ship's shape, we're ready to go and add the hull to the bottom of our ship. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and rotate so that we can see the bottom of that shape that we've already made. Once we see the bottom of our ship, we're going to need to go ahead and create an offset. So we're going to go ahead and take this bottom profile that we see here, and we're going to go ahead and offset that by one foot so that it is an inner profile on the bottom. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead and click once on the bottom. We're going to go over under our push pull and find your offset tool. And once you have that offset tool, go ahead and click once on one of the edges and simply drag your mouse in. Before clicking the second time, we're going to go and add a distance of one followed by the foot symbol. And then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Here you'll notice that we now have an inside profile. And what we're basically going to do is take this outside profile and we're going to have it tapered down to match that inside profile which is a distance of three feet. Now in order to do that, we need to create a copy of this inside profile and then do what we call an auto fold. So we're gonna go ahead and select that inside profile one time. We're gonna go over to our move tool, select move, and before clicking on the inside here, we need to put this into copy mode and we can do that by hitting the control button on our keyboard. You'll notice that a little plus sign will appear. Once that plus sign appears, you'll wanna go ahead and click one time and now we need to put this into auto fold. So in order to put this into auto fold, we're gonna hit the alt key on our keyboard and we're not gonna worry about clicking here. We're just gonna go ahead and move our mouse down. Now from this orientation, it can be very hard to get this correct. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is before we click, we're gonna go and take a look at our front view and you're gonna notice that our shape is trying to fold to match that inside profile. 
We want to make sure that we're on the blue axis and we're going down. And from there, we're going to go ahead and type in three feet. Once you have your three feet and hit enter, we can go ahead and choose our selection tool. And let's take a look at what the ship's hull now looks like. So you can see that we've taken that outside profile and it is tapered in until it reaches that offset that we created earlier. Now that you've created the ship in the hole, we're ready to go ahead and add the decking. We're now ready to go ahead and add the deck to our ship. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the top profile and work from there. So from our little movie clip here, we're gonna go ahead and click a top down approach so that all we can see is the top of the ship. And the next step is to go ahead and create an offset of this outside perimeter. So again, in order to do this, we're gonna click one time to highlight our top profile. And then we're gonna to go to our push pull and make sure we have our offset tool selected. Once your offset tool is selected, go ahead and click on one of those edges and drag it in. Now we're gonna offset that outside profile only three inches. So we don't need to worry about adding anything after our dimension. We're just gonna go ahead and type the number three and hit enter. So now we're gonna have a little side here that's gonna be about three inches in width. Now once we have that set, the next step is we're gonna go ahead and use our push pull to go ahead and bring that decking down one foot. But in order to do that, we're gonna kinda split this inside profile. So we're gonna go back and take a look at that top view approach and we're gonna find our line tool. Once you have your line tool, we're gonna go on that inside line and we're gonna drag our mouse over until we find the midpoint. And you'll see that midpoint once you get that blue circle. Once you get that midpoint, Go ahead and click once and we're going to drag a line up on that green axis until we get to that opposing side once you have that additional midpoint go ahead and click and now you have two inside profiles to work with so now we have the back of the ship and now we have the front what we're going to go ahead and do is look at an isometric view here and we're going to be looking at the front of the ship for this next part what we're going to do is we're going to grab that push pull and instead of clicking on this and bringing it up, we're gonna go ahead and bring that down. Now, before we click that second time, we're gonna basically use our push pull to push this down one foot. So go ahead and type in one, followed by the foot symbol, and hit enter. Now you've created some basic decking for the ship. We're now ready to go ahead and add the cabin to the back of our ship. We're now ready to go and add the ship's cabin to the back of our ship. Now in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and focus on this back platform and we're gonna use our push pull to pull that up three feet. Now when we do this, there's one extra step that we need to do because we want this to be a new face. We don't want it to be part of the existing part, otherwise we're gonna have problems when we try to hollow out the sides. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and click on that back platform and then we're gonna go and select our push pull tool. Once you have that push pull, before we select this platform, we wanna hit the control button on our keyboard to get that little plus sign. That's gonna simply indicate that we're adding a new face. Once we go ahead and click on that platform, we're gonna go ahead and raise that up, and we're gonna go ahead and type in three, followed by the foot symbol. Now you're gonna notice that you have two profiles on that back platform. Now that we have that, the next step is to go and basically hollow out this front so that we can see. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and select the front, and then we're gonna go back to that offset tool, select one of your edges, and we're gonna drag that in, followed by the number three. We're gonna only offset this three inches, so no need to put any symbol after the number. Once you hit three, go ahead and select enter, and we're now ready to go and use our push pull to hollow that out. Go ahead and find your push pull tool, select it, and now we're gonna click on the front of the shape and we're gonna drag this back. Now you may need to orbit a little bit, but what we wanna basically do is go back to where it says on edge. Once you do that, if you do it correctly, you're gonna notice that now it is hollowed out on the front. Our next step is to go and raise this top platform. So we're gonna go from a top down approach and we're gonna find our line tool. Once you have your line tool, you're gonna to wanna to find the midpoint. Go ahead and click once and we're gonna drag a line across until we get to its opposing midpoint on the front of that cabin. Go ahead and click to add that line. 
Now let's go back to an isometric view and we're gonna need to go ahead and move this line upwards of two feet. In order to do that, we're gonna go and find the move tool. Once you have the move tool, go ahead and click on that blue line and we're gonna make sure we follow that blue axis up and type in two followed by the foot symbol. Once you do that, you're gonna now have a peak to your cabin. The next step is to go ahead and hollow out the sides. And this is why we needed to create a new profile. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and rotate around so that we can see the side of our ship. Once you have that side of the ship, what we're gonna go ahead and do is using our selection tool, select it one time. We're gonna go ahead and use our offset tool. So go under push pull, find your offset and grab one of those edges and drag it in. We're gonna go ahead and enter four followed by the enter key. Once you have that drawn in, go ahead and orbit a little bit and we're gonna use the push pull tool again to go ahead and haul that out. Now we're gonna go ahead and make sure we only go to this back edge. We don't wanna go any further than that or it's gonna add material on the inside. So what we will now notice is that the right side of our ship is gonna be basically hollowed out. Let's go ahead and flip it around to the opposite side, select that side, repeat the steps. So you're gonna go ahead and grab your offset, grab an edge, drag it in four inches, and then from there we're gonna go and grab the push pull, and we're gonna go ahead and click on that shape one time, and then go ahead and push that back. Again, if we do this correctly, what we should notice is that you have a hollowed out cabin, and we're ready to add some things to the inside of that. Now the next step is gonna be going ahead and creating the portholes on the side of our ship. We're now ready to go ahead and create the portholes on our ship. In order to create the portholes, we're gonna add a total of five. But what we're gonna to need to do is create one and then we're gonna make that a component, which means that basically anything we change to that component is going to change for the rest of the portholes. We're gonna start by looking at the front edge of our ship, and we're gonna be placing our portholes down here below this line. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and grab our circle tool, and once we have our circle, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we see the on face, and we're gonna go ahead and click once, and drag that out, and type in six for our radius. Now that you have your first porthole, we're ready to go and make this a component. We're gonna use our selection tool, we're going to go ahead and double click so that we get that grayed out section in the middle as well as the blue line. And we're going to go ahead and right click. Find where it says make component. And as far as your definition, we're going to go ahead and give this a name of porthole. Once you have the definition, we're going to go ahead and select cut opening. Once we're ready, we can go ahead and select OK. Now we've created our first component. The next step is to basically duplicate this four additional times. Now in order to duplicate this, we're gonna go ahead and grab that move tool and we're gonna need to copy and not just move. If I were to go and take this right now and try to move, all what's gonna happen is that porthole is gonna move from point A to point B. We want to basically duplicate what we see here. So as we have the move tool, we're gonna need to hit the control button on our keyboard to get that plus sign. Once we have that, go ahead and grab that bottom left corner, and now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that along the way. Now there's no precise measurement for this. We wanna kinda of just get that spaced out where it looks good, and I'm gonna go ahead and place that second porthole. Now that I have two portholes, I'm ready to move it over to the side of my ship. Again, hit the control button, go ahead and click, and we're gonna move this over, and we wanna make sure that this is gonna be on phase. And as you notice, right now it's not. So we need to make sure that once you have that control button selected and we move that, you're gonna now notice that it's changed to on face. Once you get that on face, we're gonna need to place that somewhere in the middle. And again, you want that height to kind of be the same, but for right now, if you get that on face, we're good to go. All we need to do next is simply move that so that it is on the same axis. So what I'm gonna do, as you notice, that that's a little bit lower than my other portholes, without hitting the control button, I'm just simply gonna go ahead and click, and now I can move this guy up to so that he's basically on level with the remaining portholes. Now that I have that, 
I'm ready to go and hit that control button again and duplicate my porthole off to the right. And I'll do it one more time and move him off to the left. Once you get them spaced out and everything looks organized to you and in the same manner of what you want it, we're gonna go back to that first porthole and double click. This is gonna allow us to edit our component. Once we're in our editing mode, the next step we're gonna do is go and grab the offset tool and we're gonna go and grab that edge and bring it in a total of one inch. Rotate around a little bit and we're gonna go and grab our push pull tool to grab that outside edge and bring it out two inches. Once you bring the outside out two inches, grab the middle and bring that out one additional inch. Now we're ready to go and add a little bit of color. Go ahead and select your paint bucket. And from your paint bucket, we're gonna go and select our material library. So what'll probably happen is that you're gonna see these basic colors. We're just gonna go and grab the brows and we're gonna scroll down until we see glass and mirrors. Once you get into glass and mirrors, go ahead and pick your favorite color. I'm gonna select the blue and I'm gonna click on the inside to give that a glass look. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my metals and I'm gonna find a metal that I like and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the outside of the portal. Once you have everything painted, you can go ahead and hit that selection tool. Let's go ahead and double click and you can take a look at how all of your portholes are now created. The next step is to go and add the wooden plank to our ship. We're now ready to go ahead and add the wooden plank to our ship. In order to do this, we're gonna create the plank off of the front side right above the third porthole. We're gonna start off by going to a top view and from there, we're gonna to need to go ahead and use our line tool to create two vertical lines. The first line is gonna be right off of this inside corner. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the endpoint and draw a vertical line on the green axis. And from there, we're gonna go and find our midpoint on that inside edge and draw an additional green line on that edge. Once you have both of those lines, we can now go to a front view and we do need to be able to see that new profile that we've created because we're gonna use our push pull tool to basically push that profile down. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna drag that down and we're gonna add a distance of one followed by the foot symbol. Once you hit enter, you're gonna notice that we now have this front profile. The next step is to go and create that plank that's gonna come off the side. So in order to do this, what we have to look at is what are we going to do to create that front plank? Now at this point, we don't have a profile to really push or pull new material out. So we're gonna need to take this and we're gonna go ahead and drop that down an additional three inches. Now in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and use that push pull again and we can go and click on that and drag it down an additional three inches. Once we have that, we now have this lip that we are able to work off. Now, when we grab that lip, if we try to use the push-pull, you're gonna notice that it's only gonna come out so far. So in order to create the plank, we do need that to be pulled out a total of two feet. So what we're gonna need to do is while we have that push-pull, is we're gonna hit the control feature to get that little plus sign, and that's gonna allow us to create a new face. So with that plus sign, we can now click on that and drag that out as far as we would like. We're gonna go and add a distance of two followed by the foot symbol and go ahead and hit enter. Once we're done, we can go and zoom out and take a look at the new plank that we've added to our ship. Now we're ready to go and add some color to our pirate ship. So in order to do this, we're gonna basically have three different colors or materials throughout our ship. We're gonna go ahead over to our paint bucket, and the first thing we're gonna do is color the actual cabin. Now for this, you can see you have limited choices. So we're gonna go ahead and use the browse feature, and from your browse feature, we can go down to our color palette, and from there, we can select a color that we would like to use. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and select the blue, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the entire cabin to match that blue color. Now be careful as you are coloring this, you do wanna make sure that you get all the different parts, and that does mean that you may need to rotate your ship around 
and be able to get all sides. You'll also want to make sure you take a look on the inside to see if there's any parts that you may have missed as you were coloring. Now, once you have everything colored in, you're then ready to go ahead and color the remaining part of the ship. So for the rest of the ship, we're going to go ahead and use more of a wood color that's going to kind of stand out. So we do have the decking as well as the actual hull of the ship. So for this, we're going to go ahead and get rid of our colors and we're going to go down to more of a wood material. Now for my wood material, the decking, I'm going to go ahead and use this guy right down here. And you are going to notice that when you go ahead and place that decking, that you may need to change the layout. For this, it's pretty nice that the way that it's laid out, but if we want to get more of a wood grain feel, we can definitely do that. And we're going to go ahead and change this plank as well. Make sure you get all sides as well as underneath. Now, once you have that done, if you want to give that more of a wood grain look, we can easily go up to our home button. And from our home button, we're going to click on that material and we're going to go to edit. What you'll notice here is that the width is set to six feet. And if we want to get a little bit of a better look, maybe we want to go ahead and change that to three feet. And what we'll notice is once we click off of that, you will get a little bit of a different look. Um, we can go down even more if you would like. Let's maybe go down to a one foot and that grain will get a little bit tighter depending on what you want. So it all depends on the look that you want. I'm going to leave mine at three feet. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. When you're here too, if you notice that you do have this line, you can go ahead and grab the eraser tool if you want to get rid of that so that it looks like one complete deck. The last thing we're going to go ahead and do is paint the rest of the ship. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go back to our brows, go back down to our wood. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use more of a multicolor type of wood look and we'll see what that actually looks like. So there you go, kind of a different look, but you can use anything that you really like that you want to have it to stand out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select that multicolor, go ahead around and click on all parts of the ship. And once you are done with that, you have your ship's materials color. Now we will need to go ahead and add the remaining part of this, which is going to be some of the components. But other than that, your ship is a complete and we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to add those components here in just a second. For the last part of our pirate ship, we're going to look at how to add some components from the 3D warehouse. So the components that we're going to be focusing on is adding stairs, we'll add a slide, a steering wheel, as well as a flagpole. So we're going to go ahead and start off by adding our steering wheel to our pirate ship. So in order to do this, we're going to need to navigate to our components tool on the right hand side, and we're going to go ahead and search the 3D warehouse. So for our steering wheel, we're just going to go ahead and type in steering wheel, followed by SketchUp for schools. Once we put that SketchUp for schools in there, we should see one of our first choices as the steering wheel. Here it is, and once we go ahead and click on that, you will notice that it's going to download in our model. Now, once you have that steering wheel, what we're going to look at doing is maybe rotating a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and place that right on the deck. We do want to make sure that this is on the face and not sitting on one of the edges. Once we have that placed, we could then use our move tool to get that into place. Now you will notice that it is a little bit big for our ship, so we're going to go over to that move tool and select the scale option. Once you have that scale option, you can grab one of those corners and shrink that down to size. Now once we have that to size, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a top view here, and that's going to allow us to move that guy into place. So going back and selecting that move tool, we can go ahead and select that, and we're going to go ahead and move him right in the center there. And once we get him in place, we should see that it should stay on face. And if it's not, simply go ahead and find a different point and move it in one direction. And then go ahead and move it again and move it in that second direction. That should get that into place for you. Now, once you have that, the next thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and add a flagpole. So we're going to go ahead and modify our search. And we're just going to go ahead and type in flag with followed by the SketchUp for schools. Here you'll see one of your first options is the SketchUp for School flag. And we're going to simply go ahead and take that and make sure we get that right on face. Once we do, again, go up to that top view, grab that move tool, 
and we're going to go ahead and grab that corner and let's get that guy somewhere right at the front of our ship. So now you have that nice little flag right off the front that says SketchUp for Schools. Now the last two components may involve some rotating and scaling as we bring these in. So the first thing we're going to look at is the slide. So when we grab our slide, that's going to go off that wooden plank that we see off to that left side. Let's go ahead and bring that model in. And when we do, we want to get this in an orientation where it is aligned with that plank. So as you can see, there is my slide, but it is facing in the wrong direction. So we're simply going to go ahead and click just to place that guy in. Now from a top view, we're going to go ahead and look at this and I'm going to use the move tool, but I'm going to go and select rotate. From here, I'm going to go ahead and select somewhere right in the middle. From there, I'll draw the line out, which will be my rotation axis, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate that guy 90 degrees. Once we have him rotated 90 degrees, we're ready to go ahead and move him into place. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is sticking with my top view, I'm going to select my move tool and I'm going to want to go ahead and grab a corner and I'm going to move it over until it is just about in line. Once we think we have it close to being in line with that plank, we can go ahead and move it up and see where that comes in. You want to get it right to that end point and once you have it attached to that end point, we can go and rotate around and let's see what that actually looks like. Now as you can see, it looks a little bit low, you might want to bring that up a little bit, so using that move tool, let's go ahead and move that up so that it is flush with the bottom of that plank. Once it is, go ahead and click off of that, rotate it around, check it out. If it's in line where you would like to see it, there you go. Now you have your slide coming off of the side. The last thing we're going to go and add is a set of stairs. And that set of stairs is going to come right off of this front portion of your ship. So let's go ahead and edit the stairs and add our stairs to this instead of our slide. And once we do that, it should be the first option that pops up. And there it is right there. Now your stairs are going to come in and they are going to be large. and We may need to rotate these depending on the orientation. But you will see that there we go and we can get them as close as we want try to get them as close as you can and from there we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit now i'm going to go back and take a look at my top view here and you can see that we still do need to kind of move that guy into place so i'm going to go ahead and take those stairs and we're going to try to get it lined up right on edge once you get that lined up right on edge go ahead and click use the selection tool and rotate around. Take a look at your stairs. If they align with that top ledge, then everything is good. We can rotate our ship around and you can now notice that you have your ship built with from SketchUp for Schools.